In this video, I'm gonna talk about HDR a little bit. Now it seems like HDR is the next thing that's gonna be happening, going on with all these TVs coming out in HDR. It looks like 3D is gone, HDR is in. So I've been trying to research how to do HDR. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what you will need to shoot HDR. Well, the first thing you're gonna need is a camera capable of having a high dynamic range. That could be a RED camera, a Blackmagic camera, or the Panasonic GH5 or GH5S, as long as it has a minimum of 10 bit. And what I'm gonna be using in these series of videos is a Panasonic GH5S, because that's the camera I have right now. Second thing you're gonna need is Vlog L for the Panasonic GH5 or GH5S. Now I know that the Panasonics have the HLG color profile, but to me, Vlog still gets better dynamic range. So we're gonna be using the Vlog L. The third thing we're gonna need is a software that can edit color and export the HDR footage. And you guessed it right, I'm gonna be using the Venture Resolve 15 paid version. Now from my understanding, you're gonna need the paid version or the studio version to process HDR. But for $200, the Venture Resolve is a no brainer. Now the next thing you're gonna need is an HDR monitor. Now you can buy an actual monitor, an HDR monitor, but I just so happened to buy a Sony OLED 4K HDR TV. Now for me, Grading in a monitor that I'm actually gonna be watching my videos in is a smart move. Instead of paying lots of money for calibrated HDR monitors, my videos I edit in the same exact TV and then I check my phones and laptops because let's be honest, most of the contents online are just watched in cell phones, tablets, TVs, and laptops. People don't buy thousands of dollars, well most consumers don't buy thousands of dollars for calibrated monitor, right? Most of them are just watched on the internet. And that's where my delivery is, is the internet. So to me, it makes more sense to edit, grade in the TV that I'm using in the living room. Now that we have all the ingredients to make HDR footage, now I'm gonna show you how to shoot HDR footage using the Panasonic GH5S. So we're here, we're about to shoot a Panasonic GH5S HDR. When shooting HDR, you want to shoot at the highest quality possible with your camera. With the Panasonic GH5S, that's 10-bit, 400, all intra, 4K. Now, if you have the Tomo Shogun recorders, you have the capability of recording up to 60 frames per second at 10-bit via the HDMI record output here, but I don't have that, so we're just using the camera. So let's go ahead and switch to that by going to the quick menu here. We're gonna go to 4K, all I, you see it right there, 400, 24P. I just press my function two, which is the quick menu. Let's go ahead and go look around. All right, so let's go ahead and that's it. So right there, you're gonna see a 422, 10-bit, all I, 400 megabits, a 4K, 23.98, that's what we want. And the second thing you're gonna wanna do is switch your color profile to Vlog because that's the highest dynamic range you're gonna get out of this camera. So same thing, quick menu, go to the left. We're gonna switch Vlog L. I know you have to pay for this, but man, it is totally worth it if you're trying to unlock the capabilities of the Panasonic GH5 and the GH5S. Go ahead and go to Vlog. And as you can see here, we are showing Rec 709 because I have the monitor LUT, HDMI LUT setting. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and go to Vlog L View Assist in the menu. Click on that and you choose the LUT. I have the Rec 709 LUT from Panasonic, so I can kind of see what I'm shooting. I can see the contrast. It's still shooting log, but I can at least see in the back of my monitor what I'm actually looking at as far as contrast and saturation goes. So it's easier to gauge exposure. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we have a shot here. We have some blue skies and some dark shadows on a lake. Uh, we're going to set our ISO to the highest dynamic range possible. Uh, the GH5S has, has two native ISOs, 400 and 2500 if you're shooting SDR. But if you are shooting V-Log, that is 800 and 5000 ISO. So I'm in a lower range right now, so I'm going to set my ISO to 800. That's white balance. There you go. I'm going to press the button up here. There's a button up here for ISO. Go to 800 and you're going to see that's really bright. Next, I'm gonna set my shutter speed to 50 of a shutter because I want that 180 degree shutter angle. And then we're gonna adjust our aperture here until I'm pretty happy 
with what I'm looking at. And I know that's crazy, F11, I wouldn't really shoot anything like this, that's pretty high, but um, I didn't put any filter in front of it so you can kind of see the raw quality of just the lens and the camera. There's no filters in front of this at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, that was cool, I wish I would've gotten that. So, there I am at F11. Uh, the sky is blue, so I should be able to see that in HDR, but we will see. Let's go ahead and set our focus. I'm going to turn on my focus peaking and then just focus it. Looks like that's already focused. All right, I'm going to turn it off. Also, auto white balance. The white balance is very important when shooting HDR because it can cause you to lose f-stops. So make sure you have the closest white balance that you can get. I'm going to use that uh, white balance as auto is okay. The GH5S is really good at setting white balance by itself anyway. And then V-Log is on. I'm going to turn off my peak and then we're going to press record.